All right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply, and in this video we are going to put together this ladies wallet kit. Um, excuse some of the mistakes on this one. It was very hastily put together from the pattern, such as that uh, ink spot right there from the edge ink, and then just the overall crappy job I did on the edge ink. Anyway, um, it has a uh, buttoned up coin pocket here. It's got a cash pocket here and it has a pocket back here and back here as well as this one has spot for two different card pockets um we're going to actually we've redesigned the pockets and there's going to be three on the one we're going to build today um so there's two different ways to build this wallet um we are going to and when i say that one way is to take the time to skive all the edges to get the bulk of it down. You notice this is, this is a little bit thick here. Um, the other way is to just sew it all together as is. And like I said, there's a little bit of bulk there. Some people that bothers, um, but I've got the tools and equipment to, uh, to thin those edges down. So I'm going to do it. Um, I like all my videos, I'm all about, you know, the professionalism of the project. The more you can do to make this look more professional, then the better it'll be, the more money you can get for it, and of course, the uh, more it'll help advance your skills. So, all that being said, let's talk about what pieces we've got. Um, I'm going to take the camera down to where you can just see my desk, because you don't need to see my pretty face, you need to see my pretty leather. Alright, and my keyboard. <clears throat> so, what do we have here? We have... This piece right here, which is the pocket, um, if you notice, that thing goes all the way back into there. All right. We have the other side of that same pocket, which is the front piece there. We have this little piece right here, which will sew to that and uh, create it, uh, make it nice and supportive so that we can put a snap in it. And then on the other side of the wallet, we have the... Um, redesigned card pockets to try to take down some of the bulk we did the t style and we'll skive the the edges of these um, so that we can stack them up we'll have more card pockets but yet less bulk so just best of all worlds right there um, we designed it where these are a little bit more narrow than this piece because when you do these these t pockets like this you'll want to put it all together sew it all together and then trim off to make it nice and flat and flush but again we'll go through all this as we build the wallet this right here is the uh the liner that all of the interior stuff is mounted to okay so like there's the back of the piece that we're talking about right now um i am using harness leather on this it's not something i carry yet but it is something i'm trying out to see what we think of it it's it's a lot like the english bridle but it's a little shinier um and then this is the back of the wallet. This is what the customer sees. All right. And then I also have a little thin piece of harness here that I'm going to glue to the back side of the wallet to, uh, to, to make it nice and aligned like this one is. See? Liner. All right. So to get started with all that, the first thing we need to do is glue these two pieces together and then trim to fit. All right. So I'm going to slather my glue. Oh, first, since we're skiving edges, I've already skived this one before the video started. And all I did is I skived three edges of it, all right? The three edges that I skived are the two sides and the bottom because the top, I actually want to have a little bit of bulkiness to it so that that's not a, a weak spot in the wallet when it's folded over like that it won't be uh, prone to crinkling or something. So. I am going to take this and put it on my liner and I'm going to kind of draw some little registration lines around it so I know where all to put my glue and I don't have to feel like I need to glue all the way out to the edges on this lining piece. Um, I always oversize cut a line, uh, glue, um, excuse me, a liner that will be glued on um, and then trim it after it's glued together as opposed to using the same clicker die and trying to uh, to uh, glue them up together. So um, I will say the dies for this, I bought, uh, or I have dies for this wallet that were provided to me from the uh, 
international dye company um, in Georgia. Good folks down there, um, and uh, they we have a little agreement where they sent me these dyes. I made the wallet, and I am making them a video to help them um, explain how these dyes work. So I'm just putting my contact cement on uh, the back of the leather here, and then I'll put it on the back of the liner, and then after a minute or two, we will press the two together. Um, I am going to hand sew this project because I actually uh, have somebody I'm going to give it to and I want it to be as nice as I can make it. Plus I realize not everybody out there has a sewing machine and like I've said in many of my other videos, I would really, um, I really like uh, to hand sew anyway and I'd rather people not be intimidated by my projects if uh, they don't have a sewing machine. All right, so the glue is all over the back side of that. Now I'm going to slather it on this piece here. This would be faster if I just pour it on and spread it out, which sometimes I do. And basically how we're going to build this is I'm going to get a lot of pieces ready to sew together and then I will uh, explain where all we're going to sew everything and uh, then I'll sit and stitch for a while without the camera having to watch me and without you having to watch me stitch a bunch of stuff up. I promise it'll all be well explained. Make sure you get your glue all the way out to the edges because it'll create nicer edges when you go to burnish or put your edge uh, edge coatings or whatever you're going to use on them. I haven't decided how I'm going to do the edges of this one yet. Um, somewhere along the way I'll decide that. All right. So that is done. I'm going to set those two pieces aside for a couple of minutes and let them get ready to stick together. And when I do that, while I do that, I am going to go ahead and I do need to burnish the very top parts of the three card pockets. Just the very top parts of them. And um, yeah. So I failed to grab my burnishing solution. So I'm going to pause the video right quick. I'll be right back with it. All right, so in the time it took me to rummage through my mess and find my indelible burnishing solution, um, I gave plenty of time for this thing to dry, so I need to go ahead and put it together. And I'll get my squeaky toy, and I'll roll it together. Oh, I've got one right here. The original squeaky toy. I've got some other ones now, but this is... The one I've always had, it squeaks the most. So anyway, I'm going to press that on there real nice and good. And again, I've got to make sure when I go um, to put all this thing together later that the thick edge is going to be on top of the project. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and trim this thing down just so I can get rid of the excess and uh, get it off my bench. So I'm just going to use a straight edge and a scalpel and trim off that liner right quick. And then it'll look pretty. Now we've got nice, pretty backing to use for our wallet. Um, all these pieces are cut out of, uh, the exterior pieces are cut out of four to five and the interior pieces are all cut out of two to three ounce. All right, so there's an indelible burnishing solution here. 
open this one up, break the seal. Everybody knows you're not supposed to break the seal, but we got to. That was a joke from my drinking days. I didn't hear anybody laugh, but that's okay. It's probably because you're on video. All right, so I'm going to take and just put a little bit of that on the edges here. Let it soak in for a second, and then I'm just going to burnish them and slick them down with my finger right quick. That's why I love this stuff. You can just rub on it with your finger. Um, and I'm just doing this, this very top edge of each of these little card pockets. I'm not doing any other edges yet. Wipe that under my desk. Or use my paper towel that I actually pulled out. Alright, so now I'll take my paper towel and uh, wipe the edge of that off just to get the excess off. And I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to uh, rub it one way. And I'm not pushing hard. This stuff does not work off friction. It just works. So another one, i got to wipe the excess off, and then I'll just take my fingers and smooth it down. There we go. And the last one. All right. Now, this is the tricky part of this. And that is figuring out where exactly all of these belong. All right. So you do that by stacking up the T's. And you want to press them very tightly against each other um, right, right along there. All right. And then you'll stack that bottom one on, on, onto the stack as well. All right. Now you want the bottom one even with the bottom of your, your uh, backing there. Okay. So, push it down just a tiny bit further. All right. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these two firmly in place, and I'm going to remove the bottom one. Okay? Now, I've got a line right here that I can tell that's where my next one is going to be need, need to be glued and, uh, and stitched. So I'm going to take my stylus and my straight edge, and I'm going to trace that. And the phone just rang, but luckily a buddy's here and he picked it up. Um, then I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to remove this one, and I'm going to trace the bottom of the next card uh, pocket. And that way I can draw that line right there, and that's where that one will be glued and stitched. All right, so give me a second to get my stitching stuff together, and I'm going to pause the video. All right, I forgot a very important part, folks. Um, you've got to skive three edges of the little tea pockets, all right? Because when you put those on there, they will, uh, you know, you'll, you won't have the bulk in between them. And it's not 100% necessary. Just like I said, we are going to um, do everything we can to keep this project thin in this video. So you don't have to do it. It just, you can do it. Um, I know skiving is some people's weakness. Um, I know that it's it's a difficult task. Um, I know that I cheated and used my NP4 machine over there and did not uh, hand skive them. But I, I I know that I also I could hand skive them. I do have the ability. Um, it's an important uh, task to know how to do. All right. So again, we are going to take and we're going to line these these card pockets are a little bit wider than the base that they're going on or sorry a little bit narrower so we're going to take and uh, we're going to make sure and just try to line them up with only one side and then like I said at, the, at, at once we're done and they're sewn on we're going to trim the other side all right so we're going to take and we're going to put some glue on this sucker Just a little dab will do. If you glue it too much, then the cards won't seat all the way down. Um, but you do need to hold it on there for while you are uh, you're sewing it. So I'm just gonna barely put any glue on the edge, and we've got to stop start with the topmost pocket. All right, we got to sew it on first because 
the other cards go over the top of it. So if we don't sew it on first, then we won't get the others on. Or I guess we wouldn't get it on later, is how that would actually go. Alright, I got a little bit crazy with my glue there, due to my shaky hands. Um, so I'm going to give that just a second to, uh, to, to set up, and then we're going to set that sucker down, and I'm going to um, just throw a couple of stitches loosely across there right quick. All right. Um, they don't have to be pretty because they'll never even be seen, but they have to be there. So give me a second to get the glue set up, and we'll get to the next part. Alrighty. So we gave that a couple of seconds to set up. So I am going to line up my edge with my edge and the bottom with that line that I drew earlier and stick them together. All right, and then I'm going to take a, um, a, a stitch marking wheel here and roll it across there. And now I have my, my stitch stitch uh, holes marked. All right, and they don't have to be all nice and pretty and even and stuff like that. Again, we're just sewing across it real quick. I'm using a very, very small uh, thread because I don't want um, the bulk. Again, it's all about keeping the bulk down. So uh, this is my Dave Swallow um, tabletop stitching vise. I'm going to go ahead and use my awl and put me some holes in there for this. Ah, almost got my finger there. Okay, and I'm going to do this one on camera, but then the uh, when we go to line up the other one, the next one, I'm not, because there's no reason for you to watch the same thing twice. You could always hit rewind. Alright, so I'm going to stitch this sucker on here using my sta saddle stitch. One needle on each side of it. And then each needle will pass through every hole both directions. Or, well, each needle will pass one direction. And they're opposites. You know how to set a stitch. And then when I'm done, I'm going to use my squeaky toy and I'm going to run over these stitches really hard um, to uh, make sure they're good and flat um, so that they don't show up on the outside of the leather after it's all stacked on top of each other. Here I am at the last stitch, and I'm going to go back one stitch to do my back stitching um, because really, you know, there's never going to be anything trying to pull these two pieces apart. So I don't need to worry about doing a couple of back stitches. I just want to do one. All right, then to cut these threads off nice and even, I'm going to take my scalpel and just put it right up against the thread, and then I'm going to rotate the thread back and forth a little bit and it'll cut it off nice and even. I don't need to burn my edges. We, uh, we looked earlier. We could not find a lighter. Janie Sue stole all my lighters. Shame on her. All right. So that's stitched. Again, I'm going to take my, uh, my uh, squeaky toy, and I'm going to roll over those stitches real nice. And now they're just straight up flat and embedded into the leather, and um, they're not going to create any more bulk. So. We're going to repeat that entire process. I'm going to glue the bottom of this pocket, glue just above my line there, carefully stick it on, and then I'm going to sew it to it. And you need to make sure when you when you glue the second one to the first one, you want these T uh, tops pressed up against each other. You don't want a gap in there at all. You want that to be um, seamless, if you will. All right. So 
that's what I'm going to do when I come back, uh, when I restart the video, um, that's, that's the point we'll be at, is this will be sewn down and uh, we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Alright, so now I have both layers of that uh, stitched on with the bottom stitches. Okay, now I've got my bottom pocket here and I put it up against them both and it's more important that it's pressed up against this T than it is that it's perfectly lined up down here at the bottom. Okay, because we can trim this but we can't do anything about that little gap under that T right there. Okay, so we're going to press it up against that T, make sure everything fits really nicely and then we're going to glue it together. All right. Take a seat here. While we do this, we're also going to glue the tabs of the T-panels uh, down. Okay? And, um, yeah. We uh, bring the camera back down a little bit so you're more focused on the desk again. So, we're going to um, glue the tabs of the T-panels down also. And uh, to do that, we need to mark where the tops of them are. So I'm just going to take my fingernail and put a little mark on that base piece there. That way I don't accidentally put my glue too high. So, yeah. When you make those marks, make sure they're, you know, just a little bit up under the, uh, the edge there. That way you don't see them. So I'm going to have to put glue on all three sides of the base piece. And then on the three sides of this and then on the backs of each of the little wings of the T. And again, we're just trying to get a tiny bit of glue on the very edge. We're not trying to glue massive portions of it down. We just want a little bit on the edge to hold it all together. So I'm gonna put glue on all these pieces and set them aside for a second to uh, let them set up and we'll, we'll glue some other stuff up too. Um, that'll need to be stitched next. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on the backs of these little tabs. There we go. Get it off my bench so it doesn't get on everything else. And then I'll run me a thin bead of glue just right down this edge here. Making sure to get up to my mark. And then I'll do it across the bottom edge. And I'll go back up the other side, once again, making it up to my mark. Alright, now I'm going to refresh my glue brush a little bit. And I'm going to get it on three sides of, of this one as well. Um, making sure that they're the correct three sides, because this piece is almost square. Almost. So I'm going to set these pieces aside for just a second. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab these two pieces. All right, so this piece right here and this piece right here. And on this piece, I skived a little bit. I didn't want to skive the area that this is going to cover on the back, but I wanted to skive the three sides down below that area. Okay, once again, we're trying to reduce bulk. So we skived those three sides down, but left this side normal. Um, because we want a little bit of bulk and reinforcement there where this one is going to have where you'll pull on a snap. You don't want it too thin because then it won't pull very nicely. Now, I need to glue these two pieces together. Um, if you're going to do a hidden snap, um, then you need to set the top part of that snap first. I did that on this one, but honestly, I'm not very happy with it. it. It just seems like it's a little bit too, um, the leather's a little bit too thin to hold that snap right there. And I just, uh, it creates a little bit of ugliness. Um, so on the, the one we're building today, I'm going to set that snap where you can see the cap on this side of that. All right. Um, I'd rather see the cap than have a, a weak spot where I worry that the snap will pull through the leather eventually. Um, so I need to glue this. I don't want to get any glue onto this finished back here or it will be seen on the project or unfinished back sorry 
So I'm going to slide it up just a little bit. I'm going to take my scalpel, but I'm going to use the non-sharp side of my scalpel, and I'm just going to mark me a little line right along there. If you use the sharp side, I promise you will regret it. All right, so I can just barely see that little line right there, and that's fine. That's all I need so that I can put some glue on that thing and not worry about that line uh, or worry about crossing that line with the glue. There we go. And then I need to put glue on the back of this. Set those two aside while I uh, put that other piece that we spread glue on together. I will wipe all the excess glue off of my workbench because I was not as careful as I should be. And I really should have a piece of paper under me so I don't have glue all over my cutting mat here. But those are things that we always think about once it's a little late. Alright, so I'm just going to start with the top T and I'll fold it down into place and stick it to the glue then the second little T making sure that it's butted firmly up against the first one there stick it down and then my bottom piece actually you know what I'm really sorry I forgot something very important can't have this project done without my stamp on it so this may be a little loud I'm sorry Very thin leather, so it's hard to get a truly deep impression here, but there we go. Alright. My monkey is now on it. And that means it's mine. Or, you know, someone else's but made by me. Alright, now I will go ahead and glue this one on. Keep the T uh pushed up nice and tight then I'm just going to take my finger and push down the rest of it there just like that all right next thing we're going to do is sew up this edge right here and sew on this as well so we're going to put this thing where it belongs press it down nice and firmly I'm going to grab my other stitching wheel that's a little bit smaller because these stitches will be seen all right now with how this one's put together you have this piece, one of our pieces we haven't done anything with yet, setting right here. Um, this piece wraps all the way to the back of this. All right. Now, I want it to look really nice as far as the stitching goes. So I'm actually going to start my stitch way back down here. And then I'll just, I won't back stitch or anything. I'll just start it way back here and then go up and all the way around the finished side and then back down to about there again where I know it'll be covered up by this and that's how you get a stitch that goes up and over that and uh, it doesn't look like it uh, you know it doesn't just have a stop point right there in the middle of your project all right so I'm going to run that stitch line and I've got to make those this is a textured leather and it's really you know difficult to see my little stitch marks that I'm gonna make um, so I've got to push my, uh, my little stitch marker down pretty hard to make sure that I get good impressions and 
and this is about uh, eight stitches per inch is what uh, this little stitch marker is which is kind of my standard for wallets I really like the the eight per inch the most for wallets and, and bill folds all right so there's that piece and then I also need to do it up the side of this I'm gonna get a straight edge here And I'm just going up this one side. It's if you're looking at it, if you're holding it, um, you know, as you'd see it with the card slots facing up, then you need to stitch down the left side of this. All right. So once again, I'm going to go along here and I'm just going to poke all my holes first and then I'll bring up my stitching horse or my little stitching pony and I'll, I'll stitch it together. Um, I'm going to do these since these stitches will be seen. I'm going to do them on a flat surface with my little rubber pad under them. Um, because I'll get a much more accurate uh, job out of it than the ones that I did earlier, which I didn't care if they got seen or not. So, I'm going to punch all these little holes here on this piece and on the, uh, the other piece. And when we come back, they will be sewn together. So, give me a minute to uh, pause the video here. And uh, when we come back, we'll, I'll explain what I did one more time. All right, so we did some hand sewing here, and uh, this is what we did on this piece. Again, I sewed all the way to the point that I knew my stitching would overlap this piece right here, um, because when this is all put together, this will form that pocket. All right, then that'll fold over. Now we've got stitching that goes all the way over and around, and it looks nice. Um, on this one, I stitched up this side only. The rest of them are just glued down right now. And what we need to do is trim off that little bit of excess on that side right there. Okay, so I'm going to take my ruler and put it right at the edge of where the card pockets themselves are and trim off the excess of the backing piece. I want it nice and flush because then I'll get a nice pretty edge when I uh, when I go to burnish that area. All right. Unfortunately, I didn't cut all the way through the first time, so carefully go back across that line. There we go. Nice flat edge. Uh, when I go to burnish that, that'll be real pretty. All right, so the next steps, we're going to take this and glue it to this side, and then we're going to start building our pocket for the other side, and we will glue it on the other side, and then we got a little bit more hand sewing to do. Um, but first, we have to burnish a couple of edges, and uh, we have to set the snap that's going to hold that pocket closed. All right, so this pocket, we're gonna use a, uh, a Sigma style snap on this. Um, I don't use a ton of these snaps, but um, they are very useful for thinner, thinner things like this. Um, so the snap is four pieces, three and four. All right. And then here is my uh, setters for this, this set. All right, so how I'm going to determine where my snap goes. I'm going to basically, I'll set this one first, and then I'll figure out where on this one the back piece needs to go. All right, and I'm going to do all of that by just finding my center point here and backing it up to where it's not right at the edge of this. I want it to be, you know, a little bit down in there. Um, so I want my front snap to be right about there. It's centered right to left and then about an inch in from the end of the, uh, the point here on this, this little envelope towel style thing. All right, so I'll take my, my hole punch here, make sure I'm right in the right spot. There 
we go. So, these uh, Sigma snaps are, like I said, they're a little bit different. But this is the, what you would call, I guess, the female version. Uh, it's the Innie to the Audi over here. Um, and uh, we're going to put a little cap on the back of it. All right, we've got all these fancy setters over here to set this. I've just got this mushroom set into the cap. All right, and I'm just going to beat the heck out of this right quick. And what that'll do is that'll flatten that mushroom inside the cap. So there she goes. So that's what it looks like on the outside. That's what it looks like on the inside. That setter fits inside there to keep that a hollow cavity um, because that's what the, the Audi part of the snap fits into. Now, we have to determine where on this that snap needs to be so that when they're sewn together, they will coincide well. All right. So what we do is we line this piece up and put it on there nice and centered. And we just fold this thing over and we're going to press really hard on the button. And when we fold it back, there it is. There's a little impression right there. Shows you exactly where that needs to be. Okay. So I need a little bit smaller of a hole punch for, um, for that punch. Let me grab one. And I'm just going to put a hole punch right dead center in that. Now, this leather is really, really thin. And I can show you on my prototype here that it, it just feels like over time that button might rip out. All right, so we have alleviated that by making a small leather washer right here. I just took a rosette cutter and uh, did a little cut. All right, so what I'm going to do is line up those two. The, the, I should have uh, glued it on and then punched my hole, but I did not. I punched my hole, and now I'm gluing it on. Um, but I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to glue this onto the back of this, uh, this finished piece here, so that... Um, it'll have a little bit more rigidity in that spot and it won't, uh, that button won't ever rip out. So, I'm going to get a little bit messy here. I hate gluing tiny things because I just end up getting glue all over my hands. But that's the life we live. We chose it. So I didn't choose the leather life. The leather life chose me. But Janie's sitting over here, and I didn't even have to look, but I bet she rolled her eyes when I said that. <laughs> Just something tells me that she might have rolled her eyes a little. But I have to remind her, sometimes the Janie life chose me too. We, we all make mistakes in life now, don't we? <laughs> I'm a little on it. What's up? All right. I need to give this a second to uh, set up. So I'm going to pause this right quick, and I'll just wait a minute or two for that to set up and, and uh, be ready to stick together. All right. So the glue is ready enough. I'm going to take and line up my, uh, my holes here. And just press this little uh, rosette on here. And like I said, that's going to give it some reinforcement behind that snap. It'll look really nice. Um, and it won't have that, that bulge in it like my prototype one that it did. It'll be a little stronger of a, of a thing. All right. So the back part of my snap, I'm going to put through the, those two layers there. The front part of the snap is the, the male end, the Audi, as we say. Um, now in my setter, snap setter set, there's uh, this little bar here has a, a hole in it for that male end to go into. And then I use my domed side of my rivet setter on the back of it. And I try to hit it as straight down as I can because this one does have a uh, real bad habit of trying to move left and right and not center itself. Looks like we did pretty good. All right. So, 
Um, one other thing, I had a customer in here just a minute ago and I had to show him our uh, indelible burnishing solution. So I did go ahead and burnish this one side of this pocket. All right, so you need to do that as well. It's the side that is uh, facing the flap. That way that's nice and finished. I am gonna press fit this uh, snap, make sure it fits. The first one's always hard um, because it has to, that, that uh, female in there, it has to uh, bend into shape. So the first time you put it together and pull it apart, it's always a little bit more difficult. After that, it should loosen up a little bit and, uh, and work just fine. So yeah, see now it's working easier already. So, um, you can also go ahead and sand and burnish this little edge right here. Um, so I am going to go ahead and do that. My, uh, my sander is outside, but I'm going to go hit it up right quick. Um, where these two leathers come together is going to be a little bit more difficult to burnish, but I'm still going to use the indelible burnishing solution, and it should take care of it pretty well. But I need to, 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 I need to sand it a little bit first. So, I'll be right back. Alrighty then. So, off camera, I uh, went ahead and burnished that edge right there. And this edge right here, the one that we sewed together on the card pockets, I went ahead and burnished it. And um, that way they are ready to start um, final assembly on this interior here. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this piece to this piece. Uh, once again, we're only gluing it around the edge and only go up to where your stitches are because that's where we know that, um, you know, this part still needs to break free. If you glue more of it on there, then you can't get it to flap over and, 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 and button down like it needs to. So we're going to glue up to where our stitches are on those three sides. And then we're also going to glue this piece down to it. Once again, on only three sides. You're not trying to glue your pocket shut. All right. And uh, then we're going to come over here and we're going to do the exact opposite three sides. We're going to glue these three sides together. So let's get to it. We will start by making our uh, little marks where we know that we need to uh, put our glue to. I'm just going to where the stitches are. I'm making a little fingernail mark there so I'll know not to go past that with my glue. Now, I'm going to do the finished side of this because that's actually what's inside the pocket on this one. set that one aside for a moment and I'll do the same thing on this side. All right. So my extra glue off the table there. And I'm going to go ahead and stick those two pieces together so that I can start running my next glue line, which is to put the top of the pocket on it. Alright. Just like that. Now again, I'm going to put glue up to the stitch line here on these three sides and also on the back of this and sew down or glue down three sides of it. My glue is getting awful stringy here.
all the glue on. Now I just got to stick those two pieces together and then we'll move over to the card pocket side and do the exact same thing again. This one's turning out way thinner than the prototype did, so I'm very happy with the changes that I made to it. Um, again, you know, these really thick wallets aren't very professional looking. Um, most people wouldn't even notice the difference, but, um, you know, the, the higher end consumer will. And if you want to command top dollar for your projects, you need to do everything you can to make them as professional as you can. Alright, so here we are. We're going to put the pockets on the other side. So I need to, once again, make my little fingernail marks where the glue stops, and then I'll put glue on these three sides and on the three sides that are not sewn on the other, the, the card piece. sides of that one. And that one. Slip that to the side. I'm going to go ahead and stick these two pieces together after I once again roll all the glue off my bench. Alright, line these corners up and stick this bad boy together. Now we have a little bit more hand sewing to go. Okay, we have to sew the top edge of this side and the top edge of this side together. Um, I mean, very self-explanatory. We're gonna take our overstitch wheel. Where's my smaller one? And I'm just gonna run some stitches. Right down this side. that side. Um, so once again, just like basic hand sewing, I'm going to uh, pause the camera. I'll sew down this, this side right here and I'll sew down this side right here two separate stitches because of course with this flap you've got to uh, have those separated. Um, and then when I come back we will do final assembly and we'll talk about the option of having a uh, closure, closure on the entire wallet. All right, we had a few customers and stuff in the shop and we had some things going on, so I just kind of continued working on simple things. Um, when we left, we talked about sewing this line right here and this line right here. So that is done. That is, uh, that is now complete. I need to uh, burnish the top edge of that, that piece right there before I sew it to the, um, the wallet backing. But then I also went ahead and just sewed the top line of the backing because it's hard to do that once you've got this piece sewn on the inside of it. So I went ahead and just sewed it by itself and I left the uh, the strings out there because I'm just going to continue sewing the wallet around um, from that point. Um, I also started cutting out a little strap. This is not part of the, the set um, but it can easily be added. But it's going to be a little strap. It's going to go right there. I will sew it onto the wallet backing. Um, and then on the other side, I'll have a very similar looking piece um, to, to tuck it under um, to make a little closure on it. Um, it'll look really nice um, and it'll really add to the, uh, to the overall effect of, uh, of the, the look of the wallet that we're, we're going for here. So anyway, when I sewed the top line of this, you got to make sure, remember I skived on three sides of this thing. 
Um, so I sewed together the thickest side. The other three sides are going to be attached to these sides. Um, so yeah, like I said, next thing we got to do is burnish the top of that. So we're going to go ahead and do that right quick. As soon as I find my burnishing solution, where did I put it? There it is. Thank you. All right. Put a little of that on there. Where's the dog? Okay. Make sure that's good and spread all over that edge as you get, you know, a couple of thicker layers on there. You got to make sure that it's all over all the exposed edges. And we'll wipe off the excess we'll do our magical burnish. Alright, now that that is done, I do need to go back and I've got to concentrate on making the, uh, this thingy on here. Alright, so I'm going to burnish the edges of this right quick. I'm going to go ahead and sew this one edge down, making sure it's perfectly centered top to bottom. I'll sew all the way around this just for the professionalism of having everything stitched. And then on the other side, I will create a little loop for it to tuck under um, and I think it'll make a really cutesy little girl wallet. Um, so yeah, not something I'd carry in my pocket but I'd be willing to bet there's folks that would love to have one in their purse. So uh, we will go ahead and um, I'm going to poke all the holes and I'll let me answer this. Apparently, it's really, really important. All right, sorry about that. Some people call me on one phone, and when I don't answer, since they have another number for me, they just go ahead and call it to. They didn't think that maybe he's busy and doesn't have time to answer the phone. All right, so I need to center this thing. So I'm just using my centering ruler, kind of finding my middle. And then I'm going to glue it into place and we're going to do some fancy stitch work because I've got to be able to fold it back so that I can sew down the edge of this in a few minutes. But I have to sew this piece on first before I can put on the other piece. So this is where it gets all kinds of fun as far as things like that go. Um, so yeah, put a little dab of glue on here. I'm just going to put a drop on. I just need to hold it in place. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm not doing this in the right order. I need to punch, poke some holes in this thing first. All the holes that will not be through this piece too need to get poked through this piece. So, I'm going to start about four holes from the back and uh, leave those those four holes, and I'll I'll poke the holes all the way around to the other side when I get to about four holes from the back. Ready? So um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right quick so that you don't have to watch me poke all these holes and the video doesn't get crazy long. And then when I come back, we'll uh, put it to the other piece and poke the rest of them. Okay, now I have fixed myself to the point. I, um, I sewed around all those. Let's get this thing in focus here, sorry. There it is. So again, I didn't do, I started at the back hole, counted four each direction and didn't poke those holes. Um, on the other sides I did. And uh, let's 
sorry trying to keep the new light from reflecting too much on this harness leather um, anyway and I sewed all the way around and I left my threads on there because I'm going to continue that stitch line as I glue this thing down and then um, sew it around okay so we are going to make sure this thing is nice and centered Uh, by the way, this thing is three quarters of an inch wide and about three and a quarter inches long since, like I said, it's not part of the original set. Um, you know, I figured I probably should mention that. That way people can cut it the same dimensions as this one if they like it. I'm just going to put a little drop of glue on the back of it. And another one where it's going. Just like that. Give that a second to set up. And then once we glue it down, I'll show you the little trick I use to uh, continue that stitch line around to where you're using the same threads and you're not uh, having to splice it or leave an extra area in between them um, to sew them. Make sure my ruler's still centered. And I want to make sure this thing's nice and perpendicular. I don't want it coming off at an angle. So, there she goes, right at 90 degree angle. But I am going to check it and make sure that my eyes are calibrated. So I'm checking it with the uh, the lines on my board, and it's it's close enough nobody to notice, but it wouldn't wet on it so now it is all right so first thing I have to do is out here where this very last hole is I need to pull those those threads nice and tight and I'm going to use my awl and go through the entire project making sure not to to uh, pierce my threads that are in that hole and then from there, I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way around, and I'm going to poke the rest of my holes for sewing this thing to the wallet body. There we go. Grab my clamp here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that bottom thread and I'm going to go ahead and put it through that hole that I did all the way through those. As soon as I find it. There we go. Perfect. Alright, now I'm going to pull it itself out of the stitching clamp but leave the leather in there because I'm going to have to move it a tiny bit I'm sure I'm, I bet with the glue as wet as it was I didn't uh, get it stuck in there too great and I'm just going to continue my saddle stitch all the way around the rest of it here Should have cut my thread a little bit longer, but that's all right. Almost there, which is good because I'm almost out of thread.
All right, so I'm to my last hole that I went all the way through. Now what I need to do is poke the very first hole that I had done and stitched all the way through the back piece very carefully not to uh, puncture my thread. Now the back needle is going to come all the way up through both layers. The front needle is only going to go through the front layer and come out in between the layers. All right. And from there, I will just close off my saddle stitch by going back over the first couple of stitches that I had done here. focus on that better instead of on my hand. There we go. I know the light's too bright. Um, and then I'll cut off my strings as I always have. Okay. Cover my needles and throw my threads away. Now, we have to take our inside pieces and uh, we need to wrap them up inside the outside here so that we can figure out how thick the wallet would be when it's, when it's kind of got stuff in it so that we can, what am I doing? Figure out where this goes on the other side. All right, so I'm gonna make a little cross piece shaped very similar to this one that goes right here and it will be two inches long. And I'm going to make it out of the, the, the bison leather and not this piece, because if I make it out of this piece, then it'll just, I don't think it'll look as nice. So um, that's what I'm going to construct. It'll be uh, three quarters of an inch wide and two inches long. I will come back with that piece cut. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do Got my little piece cut out here and I went ahead and marked some stitching holes in it. Um, I didn't punch them yet, but I marked them. Um, there's just a couple there that are very hard to see since that leather's got so much character to it. Um, with this inside the wallet, wrap it around, make sure where exactly it needs to be. All right. It looks like about right there is going to be perfect. I know it's hard to see. My hands are in the way. That's going to look pretty sharp right there. Maybe I'll move it up just a tiny bit. This wallet, when it has a bunch of stuff in it, is going to be wider. So it needs, um, you know, it does need some room. Um, so anyway, I'm going to have to stand here and hold my thumb like this. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue right there and a little bit more right there. And then I can start punching some holes for some stitching on this thing. I'm sure there's an easier way to do what I'm about to do, but that's cool. One side. It's about as gangster as it gets right here, guys. And there's the other side. Give that a minute and then I'll press it together and then I can take my thumb off and 
poke the holes. And when I press it together, I want to press it together with this little tab underneath it. Otherwise, it might be too flat and the tab will have a hard time going under it. So, yeah. Let's, uh, we're going to wait just a second and I'll pause the video while this uh, glue sets up. I need it to be a good strong bond on this one. All right, so I went in and pressed that thing down on there uh, really well and it's holding itself. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll pull the tab out, I'll pull the innards of the wallet out, and I'll go ahead and sew um, that little tab on there, just doing two little like half moon shape kind of stitches. Um, and then I'll show you what that looks like and we'll move on to finalizing and putting the innards in the wallet for good. All right, got that stitched up. There's what she looks like. There's what she looks like closed. And it's gonna have enough tension on it and everything that it will always stay closed and I won't have to worry about it just sliding out. Uh, but yet it's not so tight that you have a hard time uh, pushing that little piece in there. So, the final step, we put this inside of that. Uh, we do it a lot like our billfold. Um, uh, our billfold build that we've done. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece and uh, we're going to glue it in here on two sides. We're only going to glue it up to here and up to here. And then that's what we're going to stitch. And then we're going to fold it in half because if you notice, one piece is shorter than the other. We're going to fold it in half as if it were closed. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to sew it here and here all right now if you want to you can still stitch all the way around that last little bit right there and it will look really nice and finished um, but you don't have to um, I'm going to because again I, I really like my work to look as professional and finished as I can and since this stitch goes across the top of here there should also be one across the bottom of here just my personal beliefs so we are going to get to gluing. Funny thing is, I made a promise that this video would be posted today. And as of two hours ago, there is a phone line laying on the ground on the highway outside of our shop, which includes our internet line. So this is being recorded on my computer and I may have to hotspot my phone to get the daggum thing on YouTube today. So. Alright, so I'm going to glue that and then I'm going to glue this. Um, I'm not going to glue all the way to the center of this piece because, um, again, there's going to be a gap um, so that it can fold over properly just like the billfold has. But we're just going to glue this little L shape here. And then when I punch my holes, I'm not going to punch them through the little flap. I'm going to bend it back and punch them. I say punch. Uh, maybe poke is more the word with my hole. All right, so I'm going to get that thing glued together there, starting at the corner, working my way up. There we go. And again, we've got a much thinner edge on this one than we have on the prototype one. Um, nope, that one. Way thinner. Look at the difference that the scabbing makes. All right. So I'll take my stitch wheel. really pushing hard on my stitch wheel because I want to make sure that I can see my uh, my spots for my stitch holes in this uh, heavily textured leather here and then here I'm only going to take them to about right there which is where the, that pocket ends on the inside and then I'll do more stitch holes after that So there we go. 
Um, oh, I need to poke my holes. What am I thinking? Getting ahead of myself. I'm supposed to be out of the shop as of eight minutes ago, and I am not. All right, I'm gonna poke all these holes, and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and hand sew this L shape. And when I come back, we will be down here at the bottom, and I'll show you how I jump across that that side to the other side, and continue hand sewing from there. So stay tuned. All right, so we got this far. There you can see us right there on the inside. So now I have to do that same little trick where um, this needle, when the next hole I poke will be all the way through, the front needle will only go through um, um, these layers on this end, and the back needle will only go through this one flap on the back end, and um, then the back needle will, uh, will continue through the whole thing here, um, and that way, from here on out we're just sewing these layers together all right but the other thing we have to do here is we have to glue these two pieces together okay and what that's going to create is that's going to create a uh, little bubble right there and that's how the back of the wallet is larger than the front and it doesn't just try to pop open on you all the time so I will only sew those two layers right there, the, the, the back, back piece and its lining. The next several stitches will only be those two until I get to where um, that other card pocket starts on the other side there. Okay. So if I line these edges up, I have to mark where that spot is so that I can go ahead and sew those. So it is right there. See my little mark right there with my fingernail. I'm going to sew all that space with all this stuff just kind of folded over here and um, then when I come back again I will glue this piece down and we'll sew the very rest of the wallet there. All right. So um, again this one we're going to go all the way through and put it on my pad it'll make a nicer, nicer hole here. The front one is only going to go through um, the very front and its liner. And the inside one is going to go through everything as soon as I find it. There we go. So the inside one goes through absolutely all of it. And then again, I'm going to mark and punch these holes up to that spot right there, only through this back piece here. Okay. So I'll go ahead and mark them. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and mark all the holes for the rest of this uh, side, because it's a lot easier to mark them while this thing's flat and it doesn't have the card pockets on the inside. Go ahead and do them up to here too. There we go. All right. So again, I'm going to sew up uh, the holes to the uh, to the point of that mark, and then when I come back, we'll glue up the other side and punch the rest of the holes. Cleared by the health. <coughs> All right. So again, I just sewed the wallet back and its liner in that area right there. Now I'm going to glue this side, lining up the edges real carefully, and I'll glue it all the way back to that point right there, and um, we'll continue sewing. This thread's going to have to come up on this side, and it'll uh, go around, and we will continue, um, we'll punch all our holes and continue sewing all the way around it. Um, so yeah, when I unpause it, we're going to be done with the construction of it. We'll have a couple of closing remarks, and that will be that. 
All right, folks, here it is. Um, I need to burnish the edges and stuff, but I am out of time. This video was supposed to be done this morning, and it is now 56 minutes after I was supposed to leave the shop today. So, um, but here it is. Uh, there it is with a little optional closure on it. I'm going to clip the corners and burnish the edges. And um, that turned out to be a pretty, pretty nice little wallet. So, hope you enjoyed watching the video. Hope you learned something. Feel free to subscribe to our channel if you want to learn more. And uh, have a great day. Again, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply. Thanks for watching.